Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome back to The Early Show with me, Pastor Gina, where I share with you news as well as unpack real-world events and offer practical advice all from a Dharma perspective to help us navigate the challenges that we face every day. As usual, before we start, I would just like to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video who wishes to remain anonymous. Thank you so much for your contribution and for your continued support of this program. This week, I wanted to talk about self-care. It's a buzzword, something that people mention very easily. You need to practice self-care. You need to practice self-care. But what does it really mean? So ultimately, I will say that there is no self but at our ordinary level you and I both labor under the false belief that there is a self so let's talk about how to practice real self-care instead self-care in a Buddhist context is not about finding excuses to reinforce our selfishness and to reinforce our attachments self-care in a Buddhist context is not about going to the spa it's not about getting our hair done it's not about getting our nails done and it's not about finding some me time or taking a me day when we talk about self-care in Buddhism it should be a reminder that we have one human body and that at the end of our short life we're going to lose this precious human rebirth. Do we know when this life is going to end? Nope. Do we know how this life is going to end? Nope. So, given the uncertainty of our lifespan and of our death, Buddhists prefer not to spend time taking care of this so-called self of this lifetime alone, but rather to take care of the self that has to take rebirth over and over again. So, what is self-care in a Buddhist context? Real self-care in a Buddhist context is about making the most of our current lifetime to take care of our body holistically, which means our body, speech and mind. It's about giving ourselves the best chance of taking a human rebirth again so that we can continue our practice. Self-care in Buddhism is about remembering the teachings of Lord Buddha on impermanence and karma. That whatever effort we put towards making temporal, worldly, secular success and gains, we can't take with us at the point of death. So, what is real self-care in Buddhism and what is most important is developing the qualities and the attainments that we can take with us from lifetime to lifetime until we achieve enlightenment. And what qualities are those? Kindness, integrity, honesty, loyalty, ethics, generosity and guru devotion. Real self-care in Buddhism is about recognizing and taking refuge in the teachings on impermanence, death and karma and making our decisions according to those teachings of Lord Buddha. So, conclusion. Take that me day if you have to, but remember that it only goes so far because real self-care, according to Buddhism, extends beyond this lifetime alone and it is really about remembering that our current lifetime is not the final one. Welcome back to this week's It's a Plant-Based Life where we talk about plant-based news, plant-based products, plant-based facts and basically everything that you need to know in order to live a more plant-based life. This week, I want to talk about plant-based alternatives to milk. There has been an explosion in plant-based milk products and brands in recent times. And while it might seem to be the trendy thing, I don't know if you guys realise this, but as Asians, we've been exposed to plant-based milk for a long, long time, long before it became fashionable anywhere else. And it makes sense because a high proportion of Asians are lactose intolerant. So we were going to have to find another way to get our creamy fix. And that brings us to the very first plant-based milk alternative that you're all going to be familiar with, which is soybean milk. Let's not talk about all of the other stuff that's available out there like pea milk, almond milk, walnut milk, hazelnut milk, or my personal favorite, oat milk. Yeah, that stuff is out there. Yes, that stuff is good. But do you know what's easily available and super accessible for everyone everywhere? Soy milk. Got a nut allergy? Soy milk. Got a gluten allergy? Soy milk. Got diabetes? Unsweetened soy milk. Got gout? Almond milk. My point is this, if you have a dietary restriction, if you have some kind of allergy, if you have a specific dietary need, there is always a plant-based dairy-free milk option out there for you. So the next time someone tells you that having a plant-based diet is expensive, that plant-based milks are expensive, that it's expensive to be vegan or vegetarian, what they're really saying is that they've forgotten about the vendor who's been offering cheap soya bean milk down at the market for decades already. Now that we're in the latest lockdown here in Malaysia, it's the perfect time to try something new. So why not try a plant-based food or a plant-based milk alternative? Switch up your meals and maybe use soy milk instead of cow's milk to make your food creamy. Experiment with something new, change up a favorite recipe by making it dairy-free. Let me know how it goes and good luck. Welcome back to the weekly roundup where I tell you about news and events that are happening throughout our organization as well as things that have happened in the past week. Where well, Saturday has come and gone and I hope that you guys had a nice time and enjoyed yourself following us on the live stream. The photographs have just been released on the Kachara Facebook fan page so do go and take a look and reminisce and maybe even play back the live stream if you like. Now with the latest lockdown in place, it is a good thing that we have these online programs going because it may be a while yet before we are able to welcome visitors to Kachara Force Retreat in person. So, on Wednesday, June 9th, Pastor David will be talking about Rinpoche's Ladrang 
in his Once Upon a Time sharings. In case you didn't know, a Ladrang is the Lama's private office and household. The Ladrang students and staff work directly and closely with the Lama to carry out all of his instructions, to facilitate all of his works, to organise all of his appointments and audiences, and to take care of his personal and physical health and well-being. So, Pastor David is going to be talking about all of that and giving everyone some insight into what Ladrang life is really like. Then, on Saturday, June 12th, JV Tong will be talking about forgiving yourself in his Detox Your Mind session. In Buddhism, we're always talking about kindness and we're always talking about showing kindness to all sentient beings. But how often do we remember that showing kindness to all sentient beings also includes ourselves? We ourselves are also a sentient being. So what harm can come from not forgiving ourselves? And how can we forgive ourselves? All of that is going to be explained by JP Tong next week. All right, that's it from me for this week. I hope that everyone's doing all right with the new and latest lockdown here in Malaysia, which started just under a week ago. Thank you so much for joining me this week and for joining me every other week. And thank you again to the sponsor of today's video. I'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. And really stay home, stay safe, and don't go out if you don't have to. As ever, have a great week ahead and don't forget to be kind to each other. Bye.